again one of those uh, last minute talks organized. Uh, we were very thankful to Orish who uh, signed up this morning, basically, for, <laughs> for, for giving this talk. Uh, Urish is a very experienced speaker, so he has many talks to choose from. <laughs> the, the previous talk was about Gutenberg, so we decided on a, on a talk about Gutenberg too. And he will introduce Gutenberg to us. Okay. Yeah, so my talk will be about Gutenberg. For those who don't know what it is, it's the, the new WordPress editor. Um, yeah. Maybe a bit to myself, my name is Ori. I work for Required, um, the same agency that Sylvan used to work at, uh, whoever was at the talk beforehand. And I'm a more WordPress developer, more back-end. Um, so today will be more beginner-focused, just an introduction that you have an idea of what Gutenberg is and what you can do with it. So this is the classic editor which you have today. This is what you'll recognize. You know, you've got the title, you've got your content, you've got your sidebars where you can publish your posts. So what is Gutenberg? I mean, what's special about it? And so before with the classic editor, you just had one block or one section of information where you just type. Um, but the difference with Gutenberg, Gutenberg is that it's built up of multiple blocks. And so here's an example of how it looks like now or a few weeks ago. Um, so you have the title built in, and then you've got a block here which is a paragraph block. You've got here a quote block, and then you've got another block here. And the sidebar has also changed a bit, how the structure is. But I'll be doing a demo in a minute and going into more detail there. So, whoever's updated the latest version of WordPress, that's 4.9.8, will have seen this in their dashboard. And so that's what the WordPress is trying to do, is encourage you to install Gutenberg and test it out on your site. Um, we'll be looking into that, how you might do that on an existing site, and also on a new site if you want to build for your customers. So going on to the demo, So, Gutenberg at the moment is a plugin that you can install. I've installed it at the moment here. Um, but you can just, most of you must know how to install a plugin. You just go to Add New, look for Gutenberg, and install it and activate it. So, that what that means is we go and edit a post now. And this is how it looks like what I was showing you before. We've got the title here, the Prima link is on the top now. We've got the paragraph block, and if you want to add something else, you can click on the top here to add a block, or you can go, you can do enter, and then you get another section on the side, you've got a plus sign. So let's do an image, and here you've got the section. And we can go into Media Library. I've uploaded a few images before. And we can add it. And then on the top here, you've got some different options. How you want to present it. You know, if you want to have it on the side, uh, have it like full screen, make it even full screen and have a caption underneath, like WordCamp Europe. <coughs> or like if you want to add a block in between, there's even a plus sign there, which you can use. Insert block. Another trick that there is, is to use the forward slash. And so you can drop down and look for, let's say we want to add a title here, and so heading one. And so this makes it easier that you don't need to use a mouse all the time. You can use these shortcuts to um, try something. Or you can even do like, uh, Let's do a gallery, and you can start typing, and then you, you get a recommendation, you can press enter to get that. So we can also do two images there, insert the gallery, and we saw a gallery here. And what this means is that this looks very similar to what you have on the front end. So previously here, by the gallery, you would see a, a short code, and you wouldn't see how it really looked like you had to go to the preview. So we can update that 
and then view the post. And we can see it looks very similar to what we have in the back end. What you also have is like the gallery here, you've got these two sections in the sidebar. So the first is the document, which is the whole page itself. And you've got different information here, you know, when is it published, maybe you want to add a featured image, and you can do that or whatever the information is for settings for this page, do that in the sidebar. But you might have a specific block where you want to change the settings, and that's where the block tab comes in. And say, we want to only have, you know, one column, and have the gallery in one column, and that's where you would change it. Or you want them to link to a certain page, you can do that there. Or having an additional CSS class. So this is, you know, these different options that you can test out also at home. But what you may be wondering is also, how does that affect current content? So you can go and have a look at the pages. So I've got a, a sample page here, which is not yet using Gutenberg. And so what we can see here, this is the old content, and this has got in a part of a classic editor. And so any content that has not been migrated to this block system is shown into this classic block. And you can still use it as it is. You know, I can um, add, you know, some text, or I can add an image or something like that. I'll just do a title. You know, heading three or something, and you can still manage that as it is. But you could, what you could do is convert these to blocks. You can say, you know, I'm using Gutenberg for for sure, and then that converts all these this whole content, this one block of content, into the separate different types of blocks, and then you can, you know, update that. You know, I've got another page here which has a lot more different types of things, and even for those, that works well. I just convert those to the all different types of blocks, which works fine. You've got tables, you've got your ordered list, and that all works. What another feature is, is converting. So you say, I have a list, but I want this to be a paragraph. So you can click on the tr transform, and you can transform these single items into a paragraph. Um, or the other way around, suddenly you've got a line of text, you didn't choose a, par a heading before, and you can say, I want to transform that into a heading now. And so you've got this flexibility of changing these blocks into something else than they originally were for. Um, <clears throat> what you can also do is take it to another level. Um, it's not, I'm not going to show you how to build a block, or a custom block, that's something that's not included in WordPress core, but I'm just showing what the possibilities are if you are a developer or you hire a developer to do it for you. So this is a website that we created recently. Um, it's uh, a page about a single person and a team. So we've got their name here, we've got their title, we've got the photo, we've got their telephone number, um, email, a few extra informations here, and their CV. On next to it, we've got in a tab, we've got their publications, things that they've written about. But in the back end, we've got a similar structure now with Gutenberg. Before you might, most of you might know uh, ACF or Advanced Custom Fields, and you'd have a whole list of information underneath where you'd have to type in, but it doesn't look like the site in the front end. And so what we did here was create a custom block. So we've defined oops, the featured image on the side here, so it looks similar to the front end. We've created a few extra fields at the bottom that were being shown on the left hand side with you know where they where they live, where they were born, their telephone number, their email address. And then we've got their CV in the first part. And then when you scroll down at the bottom, we've got their publications, the, the things they've written about. And so that you have the same thing on the front end. So when the user is entering this information, it looks very similar to the structure on the front end, also in the back end. I mean, it's not one-to-one, -one, it's not necessarily what you see is what you get, but it's very similar, it's very near to that. Um, but this is something that we programmed ourselves, that we wrote. Um, so if you want to build something like that, you need to uh, understand you know, the whole uh, JavaScript and how these Gutenberg blocks are built.
but it's just showing you what the possibilities that they are if you wanted to build something like this. What there is also are other plugins. Maybe we can show you that. Um, let's go to pages. So I've got a, here a pages boot and blocks. And Plugins start to support um, Gutenberg also. So I've got um, Gravity Forms, which is a plugin, uh, plugin, and that has also started supporting Gutenberg, so that you've got a, a visual look of how your form looks on your site instead of just having that dry short code. So I created a form beforehand. I can select it. There seems to be something wrong with the preview. I seem to have to deactivate and enable it but in the end you have the contact form being shown here. And so that makes it a lot easier for your users to visually see in their back end how the site will look in the front end. Um, another plugin that is working with... Um, that is working with Gutenberg is Yoast. Um, so they've got different options on the side here. They started building stuff in the bottom. Yeah, so there's no problem with the good um, Yoast being in the bottom. I thought they had something on the side here, but I can't remember if it was in the premium version or something. But they've also started supporting um, <coughs> um, like Gutenberg and making sure that all of their things work. What they have created was, um, if I look for FAQ, they've started building in a structured block. So, you know, we can enter, they have a FAQ block, so, you know, ask me a question. Uh, let me kind of, this is the yeah, answer. Um, so we can update it. And then when we look on the front end, uh, on the markup, they've added all the schema that is needed. So that makes it very good for like the um, for SEO ranking and things like that. So the Google has the, all the right information. And so this is very easy where you just add in the content and not having to think about how the whole HTML structures being set up. Um, but some of you might think that Gutenberg is not right for you or right for your website because some of the plugins that you've installed are not um, compatible at the moment with Gutenberg. And so there's a plugin called Classic Editor and you can just simply activate that um, and then Gutenberg is gone. Uh, sorry, may I ask you? Yes. Uh, do you mean it changed uh, uh, default uh, classes to customer? Where was uh, a div class? Uh, with this, with the FAQ. Uh... So uh, you mean to, it's good for, for search engine optimizations because uh, it uh, editing the cl the classes? Yes, uh, uh, to customer classes. Yes, it was adding the schema classes. So that it's possible to add in with uh, uh, its editor, Gutenberg? You don't need to think about it. So you don't need to worry about the classes, SEO, the WordPress ah, so SEO. So it, it will be adding automatically? Yeah, so ah. the, the, the block makes sure that you have all the right classes and the right markup needed. But don't uh, make a change uh, to default classes or something like that? They have their own markup. Oh, okay. So you just need to enter the content. Okay. So it's like a bit like a short code. Okay. But it's uh, easier to do it uh, okay. visually, it's easier to understand it. Well, so there's no new classes will be added? No, there's no, the new classes are only added in the, in the content, in the markup, okay. in the HTML, okay. but not in the styling. Okay. 
And you can style this now yourself also if you wanted to in your theme. Okay. But those people who don't want to use Gutenberg or it might not be the right solution for their website at the moment, you can enable the classic editor plugin. And as you see now, Gutenberg has been deactivated. Um, so Gutenberg will be coming in WordPress 5.0 and uh, that will be enabled by default. So if you don't, if your site is not ready yet, then you should uh, install uh, the classic editor today to make sure that uh, there's no issues. But what you, you don't need to worry about um, Gutenberg affecting your front end. Um, so just to uh, disable this again. So I've enabled Gutenberg, and as we looked before, there was a sample page which had the old content which is not migrated to Gutenberg. But I can still I can still view the page and the page still looks the same, regardless of if Gutenberg is enabled or not. The only effect that it has is in the back end and how the editor looks. Um, and if you're testing on your website, what you need to make sure is that if you're just doing it for a short period, you want to test it how it looks like, is not to convert um, any main pages of yours to blocks. You should create a test page and work play around there so that when you disable Gutenberg again that um, there are no issues. Um, especially as Gutenberg is still being developed, still being improved. Um, there's a few bugs that I know of myself that are still being worked on. Um, but there won't be any effect on your live website if you install it because it would just look like it did before. It's only in the back end and you just need to be careful is editing your existing content. So don't modify any existing content with Gutenberg unless you decide I want to stay with Gutenberg till it five, WordPress 5.0 comes out and then that's no problem. <clears throat> Are there any questions up till now? Uh, is it possible to change the HTML tag? Um, yes, so... If a queue was strong, if I want to make it H2, for example. So I can make because bold, so the text here. Yeah, but the FAQ example, the question was in a strong tag. Yes. Is it possible to put it in a H2 tag? I don't think that one will be possible because um, that's the markup is defined in the plugin uh, but not by yourself um, I think there is there an option oh. HTML. there's added it's HTML potentially where you can change it but I have a feeling that if we change this to H2 then the plugin won't like it Yeah, so the, the plug, uh, this block has been modified externally, um, so we'd have to convert it back, or I could keep it as HTML as is, um, but the block doesn't like it if you change the markup. But there's also an option here where you potentially could play around with the markup. And this is... Oh, sorry, um, on the top here, and then you've got the visual editor oh, okay. and the code editor. And so what's new with the Gutenberg is that you've got these new comments here, which are before and after every block. And so you don't want to go and delete these, as those are what's controlling um, what the blocks are. But sometimes there might be case, you know, if you want to copy and paste something, or, you know, still want to manually change some HTML markup in a paragraph or something, you can do that here. <coughs> Are there any other questions? Uh, is there already an approximate date set for WordPress 5.0? Because um, it, it's been postponed quite a number of times and uh, the last time I, uh, I heard about it, it was July. Yeah. Which obviously didn't happen. Um, so I think they just started the new release branch of 5.0. Um, I don't think it will be really, there's also people saying like WordCamp U, uh, US which is in the beginning of December. 
I think there might be a better version of WordPress 5.0 by WordCamp US uh, that will be announced then at the state of the word. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no official information there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it might then come out maybe Q1 next year or something with it. But there needs to be a lot of testing done. Um, and I think there's still a few bugs and things that need to be improved. But I think that's why it's important that you try it out on different websites, you try it out different places, and then also give that feedback. Um, be it through like work camps or your meet local meetup, or be it like on um, GitHub itself, um, or even try it out with different plugins. I'm sure these plugin authors are also interested to see, you know, what's working, what's not working. Um, and improve on that. Are you already using custom blocks in production at the moment? Uh, yes, so this, this site that I showed you is live. Okay. Um, and so the only problem is that the API of the code in the Gutenberg is always changing. So with every update there are things that you have to improve or convert. And so on this side at least we're work, running on an older version of Gutenberg because I think what Gutenberg is being released on a weekly or bi-weekly cycle and we don't want to keep on changing every time there's a release. Um, so we've been waiting a few months, or I think a month or so, and then we might do another update, see what's working. Uh, yeah. So it's usable in production but still very high maintenance? Yeah, it's still quite high maintenance, yeah. Why did you choose to use Gutenberg for that project? Um, so this client had never used WordPress before, mm -hmm. and so we thought it was easier for them to step in using Gutenberg. Then we explain how to use Word or the current editor, and then later on say, "Oh, hey, there's a new WordPress editor. <laughs> now you have to learn how to use that." Mm -hmm. And um, we also had a bit of complex layouts like this one, and it seemed to make sense here to use Gutenberg so that they visually. I mean, like when we go back to the editor, mm -hmm. to have a similar layout. Yeah. Um, and they're also architects, so sometimes they, it's for easier for them to see it visually, to understand how things work, instead of, you know, saying, oh, you have to, like if you think of ACF, you have to enter all the information at the bottom in this meta box, uh, which is not related to how it looks on the front end. Okay. Have you tried the, the ACF um, integration into the terminal also, which is quite um, We normally haven't used ACF too much on many sites. Uh, we've got an existing site on ACF, but we haven't tried Gutenberg yet. Um, I think they're working on it, or at least, uh, you know, looking... I think the... Like we see with Yoast SEO at the bottom, um, this is like a meta box and this shows up properly. So basic things should work fine, uh, but it's always when you have um, additional customization with JavaScript and things like that, the whole markup of the editor is changed, so those things might not work as perfectly. If I would like to create a custom Gutenberg block for a project, how difficult is that? Um, it depends how you do it. There are some command line tools that you can use to build up like a basic block and then you can sort of slowly, slowly edit sort of the H, the JavaScript and things like that. Um, I think you should have a bit of a JavaScript idea. The big struggle is that there's a lot of tooling involved in building it. And so that means you have to have a whole build process. And so understanding like this concepts of Babel and uh, post the, um, there's another something else uh, that you need to understand sort of to get to the end result. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of documentation these days. I mean, there's lots of courses also, people working on explaining how to do it. Yeah. Um, but the problem can be is some of this information might be outdated as the, the development is going so fast that you can't keep up. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I think one point from a developer's point, um, if I just was here. Um, some of you might know what custom post types are, it's like posts but your special one. And there you might have activated Gutenberg, but you can't work out why Gutenberg is not showing up on your custom post type. And the reason is, is that you need to enable the REST API for that post type. 
because Gutenberg uses the REST API to fetch the data. And so we see that a lot here when, like, if I click the update button, the page is not reloading, but it's uh, running it all in the background. And that's being done by pinging the REST API. So that's one important thing, like, if you're a developer. So, coming back a bit to, like, what are the next steps? So if you're building a new site or you've got a new client who's never used WordPress before, and the site is quite simple, I would recommend installing Gutenberg. Um, it's the future. Now there's not many months left. Maybe six months, 12 months maximum will be Gutenberg for all of the sites. And it's easier for them to learn one system in self-learning too. Um, we've tried it now. We've got a second client which we're going live with simple Gutenberg with no custom blocks, and they've been able to use it without any problems. Um, there are still some issues like with multiple users editing the content and things like that, which you may want to you know, be aware of the issues, uh, but it shouldn't stop you from using it in production. Um, existing websites, you have two options. Either install the classic editor plugin, um, and just Wait, also look how you would update to work, uh, Gutenberg in the future. It doesn't need to be now, it doesn't need to be in 12 months, but do come up with a plan of what needs to be done, what are the problems that we have that need to be fixed. Uh, and also tell your clients far in advance that they can plan with it, that they can budget for it. You know, explain to them there's this new Gutenberg coming along, new editor, it will make your life easier. Um, you can see your changes in the back end as they are in the front end. And uh, it might take some time to work into it, but they'll have a better experience. Or you can say, you know, I'm going to test it. I go say, try it out on your website. Preferably if you have a staging or local installation, try it out there. If not, you can still activate it on a production site. Just make sure you don't edit any current content and then you can deactivate again without any problems. Um, yeah, and just write a new post, a new page to do that. And do that now so that you can give feedback so that when it comes into uh, WordPress that you, you are ready. So a few stats. There was a goal that Matt Wollenberg set. Uh, initially said that he wanted to have 100,000 sites using Gutenberg and 250 posts written by in Gutenberg. Um, so the activist installations of the Gutenberg plugin at the moment is around 450,000, which is over the, the goal. Um, and they calculated using Jetpack um, that 251,000 posts have been written. And the number is most likely more because there's a number of sites not using Jetpack, so they don't get those stats. And yesterday, it turns out that they were able to track via, via Jetpack that 6,000 posts were written with Gutenberg. So it's slowly creating momentum, and I think this is the right time to come on board and try it out. So at Matt Wollensweg talk at WordCamp Europe in June, he thought that August was the time where they start working on better releases like that, and we see that we're only at September now, where we started working on a like, work, better version of 5.0. So I think there will still be some time. Um, but they're also looking to integrations with the mobile app and also Calypso, which is a local editor that you can use for WordPress. Um, yeah, if you want to find out more information on WordPress or the Gutenberg, just go to WordPress uh, forward slash Gutenberg, check out the handbook if you want to have more information from the developer side or some of the, the tooling how to use it. Otherwise, that's all for me. Thank you. Do you have time for questions? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. From a client pitching point of view, I find it quite difficult to... Okay, if we back up a bit, previously you could create a WordPress website with kind of easy, maybe uh, advanced custom fields to get uh, a nice backend uh, yeah, yeah. interface. It was very low maintenance, meaning yeah. the site is done, you do a few updates, but the client just pays the site for once and then yeah. it's yeah, yeah. We've 
now getting very coming into uh, the game, it seems to me that basically it's going to be a lot of maintenance around Gutenberg, which means if I need to tell people, okay, I propose you this new thing on WordPress which is Gutenberg, it's going to cost them a lot of money and it's going to be very difficult to pitch because it means a lot more maintenance to yep. adapt to all of the new versions. Yeah, yeah. So, maybe my question is, is there a way we can still remain a bit on the older, older way of doing business, meaning advanced custom fee and stuff, or it's we all have to move and change our habits? You all have to move eventually, but by installing the classic editor plugin, you can make sure that Gutenberg is not activated when WordPress 5.0 is released. So keep on doing your updates, up, install classic editor, and then uh, update to uh, WordPress 5.0. So, so it can be out. a strategy to wait for a few months for Gutenberg to stabilize a bit before rolling clients. I would not migrate any existing clients today onto Gutenberg. Yeah. Wait at least, we, we had a client who wanted to test it out, they heard about it. We installed it on their stadium website, but then they realized that they were missing some of the custom features that we had developed for them, which were not Gutenberg compatible. And so that we said, instead of having to look about the whole maintenance like we have with the previous client, with every Gutenberg update, we said wait till WordPress 5.0 comes out, and then we can migrate your WordPress site to um, Gutenberg. And you just, I think it's important for clients to be able to know that it's coming. So talk to them now, you know, say, you know, next year maybe, we can sit again together. Maybe you can build it in with a refresh of the website. Because from my experience working with client websites, they need a refresh every maybe two, three years. You know, look at what features are you really using, what do you need now, and then take it as part of that package. Instead of saying, oh, you know, you have to now switch straight to Gutenberg. So plan it in, then they can budget for it. Any other questions? Do you know how it will be evolute or will be integrate with the builder? Which, Which like Beaver or DV? Oh, okay. Um, I think that we need to rethink their strategy or think how they're going to do it. Um, as the API is not fully there yet, the code is not final, it's difficult for them to come out with a good solution. They can try testing it. Um, but they have also a different way of doing things. Like I know, like DV they replaced the whole editor completely. Um, and so they're working on a different principle. Like DB is a complete editor in itself. Um, I think they have talked about having support for like Gutenberg blocks within their editor. Um, but I think those are two different things and so you don't need to worry in the same way. Um, you just might not be able to use those features that are in Gutenberg straight away if you're using DB or Beaver Builder or Elementor. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot.